All right, what we're going to do today is we're going to swap out the batteries in this crazy cart. It's about two years old. They've finally gotten wore out, so we're going to go with two new batteries that I bought from BatterySharks.com. I'm not recommending Battery Sharks. That's just where we go. It's about $30 for two of them. That's delivered price. Uh, main tools you're going to need will be some way to undo the screws for the that hold the plastic siding on, the batteries, Allen wrench, and most importantly, a heavy-duty soldering iron. This is an 80-watt Weller um, that I use. A standard soldering iron that you use for small electronics isn't going to be hot enough because it's going to have to get the lead, the wire, and that battery terminal hot enough to melt the solder. So we'll get started. It's pretty straightforward. First thing you have to do is we're going to have to pull off this red plastic siding on both sides. You can't get away with just having one side off. So I just plan on taking both of them off and it's real simple. Just pop these off. And then do the same for the other side. All right, once you get the covers off, all you have to do is undo this little wing nut right here. This metal piece, see how it clips and it goes down and comes up through that hole? It'll pop off. It's gonna fall off because this little piece just comes up. It's okay. And then we're gonna get an Allen wrench and remove this little bolt stud on the other side of this battery holder. And that way we can slide the batteries out and get to them. All right, so here I've just got an Allen wrench. I'm, not exactly sure what size it is, but I'll just take this all the way out. And once I get it, this bracket will pop off. There you go. And once it comes off, you just slide this piece right out. Got a little padding on top right here. It makes it hard to slide, but you can push it and it'll come right off. Just make sure to put this in a safe place so you don't lose it. Now you should be able to very gently slide these batteries over. Sometimes you got to play with this wiring. So over here where the bolt came out, you see this lip? So the batteries aren't going to slide out very easy. So you need to take them the other way. So I'll slid the batteries out here. They come out pretty clean. And then what we're going to have to do is cut off this heat shrink. You can peel off the silicone. It's just to hold that heat shrink on and act as an insulator. And we're going to unsolder all these fittings and then solder the new batteries on. Now one thing to keep in mind is you'll want to label it because these batteries are in series to make sure you've got the right positive and negative going to positive and negative. So I use a little bit of that blue painter's tape to, to label it for me. Now that we've got access to the batteries, I want to cut off some of this to make it easier to work with the wiring. But one thing we want to make sure we do is we try to label the wire because it's, once you uh, have the batteries unsoldered it can get a little confusing which wire goes where because all we're doing is we've got this negative right here goes up to the motor or the switch in the motor this one here goes from positive through a fuse to the negative of the other battery and then this positive feeds the switch in the motor 
So we just need to make sure we have those all labeled. Um, and then we'll cut this off and we'll solder the new batteries in. All right, so I've labeled this one, this black or negative wire. Motor lead, uh, this is positive interconnect, negative interconnect, which is just connecting the two batteries together. And then this last remaining positive, obviously is what feeds the motor. There's an extra wire on here, this one and this one here that feed the LED light strips. You won't have those, but they don't affect how it, what it takes to swap out this battery. So now I'm just gonna start trying to clean off insulation and heat shrink to where I can get a clean shot at the soldering. This takes a little bit of work and some fingernails. And I might have to get a box cutter, a sharp blade, and just trim off this heat shrink. And I'm cheating, I went and got an X-Acto knife. So now it's just a matter of just kind of working your way through this insulation without cutting yourself. You want to kind of clean it off if you can because you don't care so much what happens with the battery because you're going to throw those in a recycle bin somewhere, but this wiring, we've got to use it to solder back to the new batteries. So this, the whole job, this is probably the most tedious part right here is cutting off all this heat shrink. And like I said, I just used a little bit of duct tape when I re-insulated. It works fine. There you go. See how I got that pretty clean? So that's what we want all of them to look like. There you go. Here we go, so we got all the terminals clean. Now we're about ready to start melting solder. Okay, so here I've got the batteries now pulled out. I've got the insulation, the heat shrink, plastic cut away. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder or unsolder and reattach the battery. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna do this battery first, put the new battery on, and then do the second one. That way I'll remember. So we've got positive here on the left, and then this the negative terminal with this interconnect is over here. So again, you need one of these like 80 watt wellers to melt it. I tried it when I did the first crazy cart. My daughter's, I've got two crazy carts. Um, standard soldering iron won't get hot enough to do it. This thing gets plenty hot to do it. Even with this one, you can see what kind of pro trouble I'm having. This is like a commercial solder. Just a matter of getting good contact. There we go. There we go. So that's the first one. I'm get do it so you can see it. There we are. This battery, positive and negative. It's a new one. Let's slide this one out. Oh, 
what I'm going to do before I put this one in is I'm going to pre-tin it. Which is where I melt a little solder on it. There you go. This way it'll be a lot easier to attach those wires. See the soldering iron gets pretty hot, but it definitely does a trick. So we got our positive wire here. I actually have two positive wires, like I said, because I've got a set of LED strip lights that I run off this these batteries also. So it makes it a little bit trickier for me to attach. to do it where you don't get a cold looking solder I like these hands are solid this won't be a, should be a breeze Make sure you get a pretty good joint because it's uh it's gonna be carrying about 15 amps of current roughly this is my wire it's only pulling an amp i don't care about that but this one right here is a critical one and we're gonna do the same for this battery so that that joint that joint i'm gonna do this with you see it without melt accidentally hitting something I shouldn't with this iron. There you go. Okay, so place the new second battery in. Now one thing to keep in mind, the terminals kind of match up against each other. So you got positive, negative, negative, positive. I'm going to pretend these terminals just like I did the other one. My interconnect, yep. So I was trying to do it where you can see it without burning myself. There you go. That one on. Again, I've got to do two wires because I got that LED strip light Again, this is a critical one because this is the one that's going to the motor. Alright, it looks pretty solid. 
And I'm just going to do a little bit of double checking, make sure all the wires are on. It's very firm. Then I'll mash these down flat as I can onto the battery. All right, next step is cleaning this off. Also do a quick spot check. There you go. Yep, we're working. Yep, LED lights are coming on, so we're good there. Okay, at this point, what I try to do is do a little bit of insulating. I've been through, I don't have electrical tape that sticks very good, so I just run good old fashioned duct tape. It's mainly to protect uh, from hitting up under here some, some metal with the speed controller. So you don't want to bump that. Unfortunately, all this is fuse protected right here. So if something did short out, but this battery went straight to ground, then you'd have a problem. So just kind of mash those down. Now we can start uh, working these batteries in. All these two switches in the fuse go in this little area up under here, but this is probably the hardest part is getting all this massage back into the battery area. All right, so we got this bracket. Slide it over the top. up through and put our wing nut on and do the wing nut I'll do it real tight except through the hole and we've got to put this little cap screw in over on this side Okay, we got the cap screw in. So now we just snug it up and then we'll do a wing nut. I have checked a few times to make sure when I flip this power button on it's red and I goose the throttle, it'll it moves. Okay, let me get this last side here. go total time 40 minutes start to finish so that's all it takes now the next step will be uh giving it a test drive and seeing how it does yeah, looks like it's working let's make sure Oh yeah, those new batteries are working fine.